Alps, unreachable peaks, the never-never land of eternal snows where neither plant nor animal could live. That's the Matterhorn, the barbarous pyramid that for centuries challenged rash climbers either to defeat them or to dash them to their death. Remote splendor, no man's land you'd hardly hope to glimpse without an aeroplane. But see what's happening today at the very threshold of the Matterhorn's ice cap. Tourists and teapots, 10,000 reeling feet up in the thin alpine air. What a scene to encounter on a rugged mountaintop. Yes, the tourists have now laid claim to the crest that mocked the mountaineers, setting out from Zermatt, the Swiss village that bars all motor traffic from its streets. From here on, it's every conceivable form of transport except the automobile. Always that beckoning, threatening mountain, the Matterhorn, like a mammoth arrow piercing the sky, tempting tip-top alpinist and humdrum holidaymaker alike. As one batch of visitors says, our fear is in, 8,000 other rubbernecks and rock climbers take their place in these carefree, car-free streets. What looks like a lorry is an electric float. And in fact, that's the only motor car you see in Zermatt where nevertheless you set out to climb or descend mountains sitting down. That goes for the old style climbers and the new easy way peak at the peakers, as you'll see when you can drag yourself out of the village that even in summer has the jingle bell feel of a gay Christmas card. You're 5,300 feet above sea level here in this valley village, high mountain height in itself, before you set off in the cogwheel railway for the real mountain tops. They built this electric lift, for that's what it really is, before the turn of the century, back in 1898. In 45 minutes, it takes you to the top of a 10,000 foot mountain, the Gonagrat, tunneling spurs and cutting away way up through the foothills and spruce trees to frame views that daring climbers risked their lives to see. Here you traverse ravines carved deep by gushing glacial waterfalls for the price of a railway ticket that costs less than a good ice axe. And you take home good photographic proof that you've been riding high while pulling wool over no one's eyes. This is the steel shelter that protects the railway from the avalanche. The landslides of snow in winter and the summer cascades of rocks cracked out of the high crevices by the sudden heat of the sun. Here where we're reaching so easily, the thin upper air, where the only growing things that can survive are the ice flows. The Cogwheel Railway is just one way of climbing mountains sitting down. The aeroplane, too, can take you off to a grandstand view of the high Alps. What's more, an airlift, remote as it is, reveals the full treachery of this dead and icy land. You sense the menace below you from the pressurized comfort of your chairborne, airborne perch. Mont Blanc is wicked as well as wondrous, as it jerks a jetliner in the turbulent air it creates. But back to Earth to get the full flavor. There's a whole range of cable ways of enabling you to be sitting on top of the world. No foot slog through the foothills, you can go by cable car or by chairlift right to the silent heights. You can hear the silence skimming these lofty forests and gouged out valleys. Cables are inspected every day, oiled every month, and x-rayed every year. And today, Pathé Pictorial, famous for its magic carpet, gives thanks and acknowledgement to the sheer wizardry of the Swiss engineers, 
who have woven three million pounds worth of these aerial railways in a complex network, which gives us a magic carpet more unbelievable than any before. An invisible carpet that has brought us face to face with the Brighthorn and its 14,000 feet of splendor. Going down, you seem to swoop like some preposterous bird. But both ascent and descent are up and down journeys over the crumple of geology that through eons of time has piled up those metamorphic peaks. One cable railway can take you to the very summit of the ice-clad Stockhorn, nearing the 12,000-foot mark but without needing to walk or climb a tricky step. You can go even further by snow cat. The virgin snows of yesteryear, the defiant crests of alpine history, are truly a tourist's playground today. And all you need is a nose shield, but no less magical for that. Only the topmost summits themselves elude the armchair alpinist. You need knowledge and courage and skill still. An ice axe and an ice cool head for heights to scale the final icy face of a mountain like the Matterhorn. Pathé Pictorial now sets out to do just this, so that in a week or so, you can come with us on what still is the most exhilarating journey in this colorful world. <laughs> 